Hello guys, welcome to um, the video. As you can tell by the title, this is going to be about my um, very, very tiny baby crested gecko. Um, as you can see, that's him or her there. Just having a drink, I sprayed the leaf there while he was uh, while I got him out. Because he was a pain to get out, so I had to take the whole branch out and put it on the bed. And uh, yeah, he's having a bit of a drink now. <laughs> But yeah, really, this is just going to be for sort of my experiences so far. Um, anyone who's actually thinking about getting a crested gecko at the moment and, you know, needs a little bit more information. Um, because obviously most people are going to be doing research and I did a lot, a lot of research before um, I decided to get this little guy or girl. Um, but as you can see, really relaxed, just chilling out. Um probably a bit annoyed that I woke him or her up actually um, because obviously if you didn't know um, they are actually nocturnal um, and sleep throughout most of the day um, now in terms of setup um, now this guy is really really small um, and most people recommend sort of storage tubs you know with a bit of height rather than length um, because they are an arboreal gecko um, which basically means that they prefer being up high um, rather than on the ground however um, doing a bit of research into it and so on and so forth um, you know the tub idea is a really good idea and um, I would probably recommend that but if you do have the time to actually keep an eye on them make sure they're finding their food and so on and so forth you can just put them in um, an upright vivarium which I'll show you in a second um, but obviously I would recommend if you don't have the time and the safer option is obviously put it in a tub to start with. Um, but yeah, as long as they've got enough cover and um, you definitely know that they're finding their food because that's the main issue with baby geckos is obviously that they, um, oh, he obviously doesn't like me talking. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is the main issue with the smaller ones and why people tend to keep them in sort of tubs so they know that they can find their food. Um, and also it's really easy to keep the humidity up um, for these guys in the tub. Right, so um, I'll start with sort of supplies and so on and so forth while he or she disappears. Um, so what I have found really useful, um, which I tend to use quite a lot, is um, just a simple milk lid, as you can see there. Really simple, really easy to use for their food. Um, it's not too deep. Um, which is key for obviously the baby geckos and you're not wasting so much food every time because they eat such a small amount and um, it's really difficult to even see if they are feeding unless you obviously see them do it physically um, so yeah milk lids are perfect um, if not I have got these little storage tubs here um, which I got from gecko diet so if you are in the UK um, gecko diet is something I'd really recommend checking them out so yeah I've got all these and also like just another spare lid there um, as you can see I've got like a sort of spongy thing for cleaning down the glass because um, they tend to actually drink from the side of the uh, vivarium or tub so you need to spray them down once as a minimum per day um, but I always do mine once in the morning and once at night as well, just to keep the uh, humidity up. Um, roll the paper towel, um, obviously, because at the moment, if I am dropping in sort of smaller crickets and so on and so forth into the tank, um, they are quite clumsy feeders, so I don't want them to sort of get any substrate um, digested and get impacted. Um, and lastly, equipment wise, I have just a simple spray bottle. Um, to be fair, you can pick these up um, in the UK for about a pound from the pound shop, um, but this one is actually from a reptile shop that I uh, now work at. So yeah, I managed to get a bit of a discount on it, but you know, um, the pound ones from the pound shop work fine. Right, so on to the actual setup itself. As you can see, as I mentioned earlier, um, I do have paper towel in there that needs changing, which is tomorrow. Um, and you'll also notice the sides there um, have got sort of water stains and so on and so forth, um, which I do clean off regularly. Um, but where I gave them quite a heavy misting down over the last couple of days because the humidity was really low. Um, so I'll just wipe that off because it does come quite hard. Um, and 
yeah, so it's just um, a case of cleaning that off. Um, I clean everything out uh, once a week and sort of spot clean as I go. If you do see any sort of drop-ins or anything like that, best to remove them straight away. Um, so yeah, more on the equipment side as well inside the uh, Viv. So this feeding ledge is actually from the website I was telling you about, um, Gecko Diet, that's the uh, website there. Really simple, just put the suckers in and it sticks right to the side with the milk lid. I always leave a bit of standing water in there just in case he, um, he or she does get a little bit desperate. And uh, there's always a shallow, shallow water dish just in case. That is optional. Um, and as you can see there, um, I tend to feed this little guy at night so the, fear, the food pot isn't in there at the moment. And equipment. This is a hydrometer, as I said, it is really dirty at the moment, so I'm going to clean all that off. Um, and as you can see, I think it's sitting sort of about the 60, 70, 70 mark, yeah, at the moment. Obviously at night time, I tend to boost that to about 80, 90, um, when, because he is such a small guy and humidity for him at the moment is um, extremely important. Um, so moving back to the Viv, as you can see, I've got a sort of like a little reptile cave there. It was more for my um, leopard geckos, but, you know, I cleaned it off and just put it in there. So on the odd occasion, I've never ever seen him or her use it. But if he did ever go onto the floor, um, at least there's a little hide in there um, for he or she to pick out. Now, a lot of people use the uh, jungle vines, which are perfect um, for these are really, really high highly recommend them um, however I just use this bit of aquarium wood um, gives full cover for the whole cage as you can see starts there works all the way up and there's a little ledge there another ledge all the way up to the back and the one that comes all the way to the front as well so it fits perfectly for me um, a lot of people use the jungle vine because obviously humidity is high, you're spraying down the tank and wood obviously tends to rot. Um, and a lot of hiding places, this one, it's all fake plants in here. This one is just in the, on the, uh, the ground there, I don't know if you can quite see. But yeah, just on the ground, try to get the leaves sort of moving upwards so if he, he or she does explore the tank, at least I've got some cover from the side. I've got another... Um, sort of fake plant just stuck on the side there, a bit of cover on this side and obviously the main one that he or she spends a lot of time in that's normally stuck on that side there. Um, so in terms of sort of care and things like that, um, my guy as I said does feed occasionally once a week as a treat on um, small crickets um, but the main diet that this little one loves is um, Pangaea and um, a particular flavour in general is actually the uh, watermelon and mango, I think it is. Absolutely goes nuts for it, loves it and it smells beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's food wise. Um, temperature wise, this is a little bit debatable but this guy I've found, um, I've spoken to a lot of breeders, the one I got this little one from keeps them at room temperature so they've not really known any different. Um, if I can, if I do need to boost the temperature, um, there is a, a ceramic in the canopy there. However, most of this temperature there stays around sort of 20, 22, um, which is absolutely fine. Um, the only time that you really need to be worried is I really wouldn't recommend uh, dropping below 17 degrees. Um, so at night time, I do sometimes put the ceramic on. However, I do have a scorpion over there, which I need to keep obviously a lot hotter as he's a desert species. Um, so yeah, the food, obviously I mentioned about them drinking off of the uh, the side of the uh, the cage. In terms of housing, as I said, I touched on it a little bit at the start. Um, most people, when they are babies, keep them in rubs or tubs, whatever you want to call them. Um, however, this is a Zoom Med... I think it's a 30 by 30 by 45 tall, so 30 that way, 30 back and 45 tall, um, which 
I found obviously because I spend a lot of time at the moment at home um, and especially at night when I'm in sort of my room working on things and so on and so forth um, I have seen him feed I know that he knows where the food is and um, so I'm not so worried about it but yeah a lot of people have recommended to use the tubs or rubs because it is a lot easier for them to find their food and I completely agree um, it's just a case that this works well for me um, but I would recommend if it is your first gecko definitely do a lot of research <clears throat> excuse me um, into that and um, yeah the one thing I would say is if you do go for the Zoomed um, terrarium is that um, on the mesh back in here I've got some uh, paper towel sort of wet paper towel in the uh, gaps because when you run the sort of like the thermometer and so on and so forth through um, that's what the gaps are for on the zoom heads I've noticed that the uh, there's no option there's no like catch to cover these so I've had to put paper towel in it um, to stop them from getting out basically but um, on the exo terrors they seem to have a cover so I don't know what that's all about but yeah just a bit of damp paper towel uh, let it dry out and then uh, you can't push it out but uh, yeah let's see if we can find him again I don't know where I keep calling him him but I don't actually know it's really hard obviously when they're this small to uh, to tell the sex but um, bear with me one second I'll see if I can find him <laughs> 